Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen, church. Come on, give God some praise right now here in this building. Amen. Worship team, I could just if you could just play the uh, piano for now, Carlos, please. Thank you. Um, so, Amen. I just want to. You guys could be seated. I just want to thank God for my salvation and for what God is doing. I know the students. The following week, we just got back from the mountaintop. Amen. It was powerful. It was a great time. Right now, the young adults they're at their uh, winter retreat. Elevate. Amen. Ours was upward. Right. We're going. We're going all the way up from here. <laughs> amen. But it's a privilege. I just want to thank God for my salvation. And um, yeah, um, am I going to be long tonight? And then, we'll, you know, I have a word that God put on my heart. I believe even, even, if, even if it may not be for you tonight, but maybe it's something that you need to apply for somebody that you know. Amen. And tonight I'm going to read, if you have your Bibles, uh, Matthew 16, verse 19. Matthew 16, verse 19. And just to put a little backstory, I mean, many, many, many of us, we have probably heard of this scripture, but this is actually Jesus talking to Peter. I, I, verse 19 really stuck out to me, but in verse 18, Jesus actually says to Peter that, now I say to you that you are Peter, which means rock. Upon this rock, upon this rock, I will build my church. And it says that all the powers of hell will not conquer it. But what I love in here in verse 19 Jesus tells Peter this, and I believe Jesus is even telling us tonight, church, this for our personal lives. Is that, and I will give you the keys, right? Jesus says, I will give you the keys of the kingdom. I'm going to say it again. Jesus is saying in his word that I will give you the keys of the kingdom. And whatever you bind on earth will be bound in heaven. And whatever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you for this time. I pray that the same way you spoke to me, Father God, Lord, that we will, Father, live a lifestyle, my God, of just authority in our lives, Father God, going into not just this next year, but even running, my God, through our life and our daily, our daily life, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. I want you to turn to your neighbor and tell him, you got the keys. I want, you got to tell them that you got the keys. You got, See, that's the thing. Tonight, I want to tell you, church, is that you got the keys. You got the keys to the kingdom. You got the keys. See, many of us, we know the term, if we have heard the term of binding and loosing. See, the Lord is saying, he's saying tonight that I, he's saying this is that I have given you authority. He has given you authority. And he's saying whatever you bind and loose through him, right? Whatever you bind and loose through him will be broken. Those things that need to be bind in our life still. Maybe, maybe it's not in our personal lives, but maybe it's in somebody that we may know. See, to bind is actually to restrict, right, right, and then to, to lock, to tie down, to restrain, so it can't do what it wants to do. See, church, if Jesus said to if Jesus said this to Peter. Right? If Jesus was telling this to Peter, he's telling us today that, that there is power that comes from our mouth. There's power that comes from us. See, Jesus is revival, and the Lord is telling us we need to start to obey God's voice because he is telling us it's time, church, to use the authority. Not just, and do not wait until next year to use the authority that you have, that he has given you. But today is the day to bind and loose, to tie, to restrain those things that are stopping us from going all the way in with, with Jesus. He has given you the keys to the kingdom. I want, that, I want you to believe in that tonight is that young person, uh, somebody that's been serving from the ages of maybe young to when you're older now, don't, do not forget, always remember that he has given you the keys to the kingdom. But the question is, is that where are the keys tonight? Did you leave them behind? <laughs> did, you, did you leave them in the car, right, in, our, right, in, a, in a natural way we, we, we leave the car, right? Sometimes we leave our keys in, in the car or, or or, you know, or we lock ourselves out the house, amen. <laughs> but today, the question is this, is that, did you leave your keys over there and trying to do things on your own strength? 
But Jesus is saying, it's time, it's time to get your keys. He's saying that, look, I, went, I left earth. I left earth so I could send my spirit. But before I go, I'm telling you that, look, you have keys to the kingdom. You have keys to the kingdom. He's telling the church today, see, the keys are a symbol of authority. You have full access to the kingdom. See, Jesus, the, the, the veil has been broken. The veil has been broken. And the Lord is saying that, my child, my son, my daughter, I have given you the keys. But why aren't you using them? So the enemy wants to blind us and distract us from understanding this revelation. See, who, and who has access to the kingdom? It says here that to all who believe in Jesus and, and obey his word. For the kingdom doors are swung wide open. We know that we have the keys and it's time to leave. It is time not to leave the keys behind. But to know, but to know this is that we carry power and boldness. See, in Titus 2.15 it says this is that declare these things, exhort, rebuke with all authority. Let no one disregard you. So back to this term is that, you know. We know of the keys. Well, of course, keys can be used to lock doors as well as to open them. See, a part of the gospel message is that faith is necessary. Without faith in Christ, the door is shut and, and bar- bared. Or, or bar- yeah, bared, I believe. <laughs> but I was thinking about an officer, a cop, right? I was thinking about a person, right, a, a, a police officer that has authority to lock somebody in jail, right? Why? Because he has he has a badge, obviously, that, that, that's an authority. But at the end of the day, that person has keys. See, see, the Lord is saying this is that, the Lord is saying that it, it, that, doesn't, that doesn't mean we could go judge people, right? But however, we have authority to go now and proclaim Jesus is the Messiah, which will allow people to enter the kingdom of heaven. And this is, the great com- this is what the Great Commission is all about. The Lord wants to use you. The Lord wants, you to, wants to use you in this time of, of the, the times that we're in. I think about next Wednesday as people come into this building. See, people are going to come and they're looking for an answer. And see, we have the keys. We, we have the answer. For, we have the answer for the people. I love this commentary, and it says that the religious leaders thought they held the keys of the kingdom, but they, and they tried to shut some people out. See, there's going to be times where the reli- those, you know, we don't fight against flesh and blood, but there will, <laughs> there will come people that are religious, right? It's a religious spirit. They will try to come and blind us. Even others, even others will try to condemn us. And tell us not to go all the way in with revival. To tell us that we do not hold the keys. There will be people that will try to shut people out from experiencing the Lord himself. But today I want to let you know, church. I want to let you know online is that, is that you got the keys and we have the goods. But at the end of the day, we can't decide. We cannot decide to open or close the kingdom of heaven for others. But God uses us to help others find the way inside. I pray tonight that this is giving you an urgency. This is giving you an urgency to continue to dig deeper, to continue to understand the authority that you have in your life. When I think about, or we should exercise the power of binding and loosing that Christ gave to the church, because we see that when Jesus was telling Peter, what Jesus was telling Peter is for us today. See, when I think about being, when the word loosed, it says that to all those who repent, in Jesus Christ have their sins forgiven, and they are declaring that such, that such people are loosed and have entered the kingdom. And I believe that this is really, um, this is why it's very important for us as the body and as the body of Christ to share the gospel. Yeah. Next Wednesday, we got to share the gospel to the people. Tomorrow, when we go to our jobs, we got to share the gospel to the people. See, we're contending, we're pushing, we're, you know, we're sustaining revival, but now we have the goods. <laughs> we have the goods. I'm trying to bring some encouragement to somebody tonight that it's not about us anymore, but it's about the people, right? So they can hear the good news. So bondages, not just off the people that come in, but bondages can be broken off our family's lives or even our own life because, our tes- and, and because of our testimony and because of the revival that lives within us. 
it's time to leave and forsake maybe some things in our personal life. Maybe tonight we, we haven't went all the way in with God, with the Lord, because we, there needs to be some things that need to, be, that need to be loosed out of our life. Some things that, need to be, that we need to bind out of our life. But like I said, is that maybe, you're, maybe it's not even you tonight. Maybe you know somebody, and it's time to stand in the gap for those loved ones. And, that's, and this is why it's important to use our words, to use our voice to bind and loose, to stand in the gap for those who remain unrepentive, unbeliever, unrepentive or unbelievers because technically they are bound and the kingdom of heaven is shut against them. Jesus has given us legal authority over the powers of the devil for this is, a posi- this is positional and because we are sons and daughters. So tonight I have three things that, that I've applied in my life that I've learned from somebody taking these notes down, and I feel in my heart to share them to the church tonight. Amen? Amen. Number one is that we need to start to bind the strong man. What is the strong man? See, the strong man, it says here, the strong man is the one who owns the house. Is It says Satan. But in today's world, his is his house. His possession are people. See, I, I know that the term, right, all this binding and deliverance stuff, but at the end of the day, it's this is that there could be strongholds in our life, church. You online, there could be a stronghold. It could be alcoholism. It could be drugs. It could be maybe just the little things, the little thinking. Sometimes it could be the little things that we think are not even big in our own eyes, but in God's eyes, it's really big. See, some of us cannot continue. We can't. Some of us, we, we, God wants us to walk in our purpose and in our calling, but there's things that we have not let, let go of. There's things that we have not bind in our life. But I have something to tell you tonight, church, is that Jesus came to plunder Satan's house and free his captives. He has complete power and authority over Satan and all his, all his foes. And But the Lord is saying today that you, church, have power. Now you have the authority. You hold the keys of the kingdom. If you have authority and you hold the keys of the kingdom tonight, I want you to make a shout to God. And I want you to declare it. You online, if you have keys to the kingdom, I want you to say, I got the keys to the kingdom. I'm ready to go into this next year running with the keys and not leaving them behind anymore. There's some things that we need to bind on in our lives. See, revival, let me tell you something. We, we want to experience revival. We could be all talk, but really deep down inside, there, there's those things that Jesus is saying that, my son, my daughter, I, I need you to start binding those strongholds. Uh, you cannot fully walk in your purpose or your calling if you continue to look back, if you continue to, I don't know, you know, there's a lot of things. <laughs> Amen. But only you tonight, you online, you know what, what, what needs to be bond, binded in your life. See, just, just because we understand this, though, right, we have the revelation of it. See, the enemy doesn't want us to understand this. He doesn't want us to know that we have dominion. Somebody once told me at a job, they said that, did you know that you have dominion? I was like, huh? Like, I didn't really understand it, and I started studying and everything, but, like, you have dominion. You have power. Like, I've always known that, but it's just really thinking, man, the enemy, the devil, right? I mean, not to glorify his name, but... He doesn't want us to know we have authority. You know why? Because he wanted to have authority. Because he wanted to reign. Oh, but there's a man named Jesus who came and he went to the pits of hell and he took the keys. And today he is saying, church, I have given you the keys to the kingdom. Now walk in it. Walk in revival. Stop letting perversion get over your life. You, the perversion is a root of religion. It needs to break. It needs to break. Our ministries aren't growing because we continue not to bind certain things in our life. Our children aren't getting saved because, see, our school systems are bad because we're not binding the strong man. For it is important that we continue to stay focused and not get sidetracked because the enemy would love for us to get sidetracked. The enemy will love for us to get all prideful and big-headed that we know that we have authority now. Don't. We got to continue to stay alert and remain humble. Why did the enemy get kicked out of heaven? Because he beca- because he became pride prideful. First Peter five eight, it says, "Stay alert, watch out for your great enemy, the devil, for he prowls around like a roaring lion, looking for someone to devour." See lions. If you think about it, lions. You know they 
in, the, in, their, in, their, in Africa and all that, whatever. But um, they, they attack, right? They don't attack quick, but they take their time. See, the enemy is the same way. The enemy takes his time. He, 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 he gives you a, a little taste of something small, right? And, or he opens a little door for you. And it's, it's up to us, right? We could go through that door. We could continue to stay alert. We could continue to stay focused. We could have the eye of the tiger. We could, we could focus on the king, the king of kings. But that, look at here. It says that lions attack those small and weak animals. For they choose, their, they choose victims who are alone and not alert. This is why it's important to have accountability. This is why it's important to, to be around those that are going to lift you up. It's, it's important, even going into next year, getting around those that are going to help you, that will pray for you. And most importantly, it's taking every thought because when that person isn't with you, when your leader isn't there, when the pastor isn't calling you or he doesn't return your call, it's important to continue to understand that, look, I, I, cannot be, I, I can't be held like a baby no more, but I got to continue to be alert and understand the principle of living the word of God out and understanding that it's time to bind those strongholds in my life. It's time to take every thought captive. See, in 2 Corinthians 10, 4, and 5, here Paul is actually defends, Paul defends his authority. And he says that in, in 2 Corinthians 10, 4, 5, it says that we use God's mighty weapons, not worldly weapons, to knock down strongholds of human re renouncing and to destroy false arguments. We destroy every proud obstacle that keeps us from knowing God. We capture their rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Christ. It's simple. Tonight is the night to really maybe dig deep into your mind. <laughs> See, sometimes we, don't, we just want to go about our days, but tonight it's the night. Today is the day to understand this. Understand this. It's time to bind that strong, that mindset. Because it starts with the mind. It's our mind that is telling us that we can't, we don't have a purpose. It's our own thoughts. It's our own, it's our own emotions. But the Lord is saying that we don't use worldly weapons, but we use supernatural weapons, right? We use our words. We, 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 we know that we, we sit above with Christ. We sit in the heavenly realms. See, Paul assures us that God is my, God's mighty weapons, right? Important, and the important ones are the influence of prayer, faith, hope, and love, and God's word and the Holy Spirit are more powerful and effective. See, we want to bind that person next to us, but really, why are you going to bind that person? <laughs> we're, supposed to have, we're supposed to have unity in our church. We're supposed to love each other. We're supposed to welcome people, even the backslider. We're supposed to welcome them. We're not supposed to talk down to our brothers and our sisters, but we're, at the end of the day, know this. At the end of the day, I'm not fighting against flesh and blood, but I'm fighting but, but against the principalities, right? And the powers of this dark world. And, sec and secondly, for, so first of all, is it's time to start to bind the strong man. And you, you, it's time to bind the strong man in our life. It's time to go to ask God, God, what is it that, that needs to be? I want to walk fully in my calling. I want to walk, you know, I know, God, you have a purpose for me. But there's just some things that are holding me back. And you got to let that sink in tonight. What is holding you back? You got to think about it. Like, what, what is it? Like, why can't, why do I, the, you, the thing is, we have to break the cycles. I, I love that, um, yeah, we just got to break the cycles. When I was over there at the winter retreat, Pastor Daniel from uh, the UTC director in Amsterdam, he was pretty much preaching a message, you know, about upward, you know, we only go up from here, no turning back. But what I got out of it is that breaking the cycle, right? I mean, obviously he brought it to a level where young people will understand God just showed me you got to obey, Mario. <laughs> like, man, I have to go all the way up there and to hear him say, you obey. No. But, right? I mean, but breaking the cycles on our life, breaking the cycles. But we, see, we, we have authority. We understand that we could bind the strong man, but we cannot do it at least if we bind and pray and power. It, that's the second point is that bind and pray and power. It's time to devote ourselves to more prayer. It's time to have a, a, have a hunger and, and, and a and just a longing to be in his presence more. Devoting, right? In Colossians 4.2 says, devote yourself to prayer with an alert mind 
and a thankful heart. It's time to continue. That's why you hear our pastor when he's up here. He's like, pray, 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 pray. You know, <laughs> because we're trying to break the atmosphere. Amen. We're trying, to, we're trying to train. We're trying to equip. There's people. There's people that come in. And, and we can't have leaders and, and, and a church that is just dry in prayer. But we got to have a church that's dripped in oil. That, that is understanding the principle of prayer. Of I'm devoting myself to prayer. But you're in the secret place. And when you come to the house, then you're understanding the principle and then when the people come in you're going to be able to pray for them you're going to be able to stand in the gap for them because sometimes we come in and we're the ones that are supposed to be devoting ourselves to prayer but then but then we feel the heaviness we feel the heaviness but i encourage you devote yourself to prayer even find some people to get with for prayer see in acts 12 5 it says so peter was kept in prison but the church was earnestly praying to god for him us as believers, we, we may see the impossible situation. But even here in this verse, they took prayer seriously. And they gathered to pray earnestly unto God. I pray that tonight that you understand that I cannot do nothing on my own strength no more. But I can only do it with the, with the power of prayer. He has given you power. He has given you, he has given you the resources. And one of them is, is prayer. It's getting back to a place of prayer. See, no prayer, no revival, right? No, you got to have a lifestyle of prayer. You got to live a life where that you're at your job, you're praying. But even, even praying for your loved ones, praying for your family member, praying that, 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 that sickness is loosed in the name of Jesus, believing, believing that, that your children will be set free in the name of Jesus. And thirdly, and this is my last point tonight, is that, as we start to understand, as we know that we got the keys, right? We could bind the strong man in our lives. We bind and pray in power. Then we have the authority. This is a big one, but it's important because like in our school system and, and in our government, it says that bind the strong man of the city. We have, we have the powers and the keys to do it with faith. We don't do things on our own strength, but we do it with the power of prayer. For we, are, we, we know that we are branded by fire. We, we, are no, we know that we're bought by the blood, but we do this with faith. I want to let you know, church, it's time to take back territory. It's time to take back the, everything that the enemy has stolen. It's time to take back. Uh, it's time to go into, into this next year running and taking back what the enemy has stolen. Tomorrow morning when you wake up, it's time to take back territory. What to, right now, tonight, when you go before you go to sleep, it's time to take back regions. It's time to take back territory. It's time to take back the regions. It's time to stand in the gap for the school system. It's time to stand in the gap for the people, for your children that are getting corrupt by the school system. Even this whole, like, thinking you're a man or a woman. Somebody said this. One, I want to tell the world, too, is that we, we love the person. We so love the person that if their identity in them is confused. But let me tell you something. We love the people, but we hate the spirit. We don't like the demonic spirit. And you have to stand in the gap for those things. That's why you bind the strong man of the city. You bind the school system. Mm, my God. See, it's time to allow prayer to have a hold on our life here in the church. Because if, because if not, the principalities of darkness will continue to have a hold on the regions of our city. Our, our city needs prayer. And if I could have the, uh, just the worship team or the band to come up, please. Amen. I, I pray that you're getting, what you're getting tonight is just those three principles in your life. It's understanding that you can bind the strong man in your life. Whatever that stronghold is in your life tonight, maybe it's somebody that you know. Maybe you fill in your mind, man, I'm good. I'm, you know, yeah, we all have things that we need to let go of. But, but I, I believe that, that strong man, like a giant, like, like, like King David, he needed to face this giant, right? King David needed to face the giant of Goliath. And that giant was standing. And, and, and see, that's how the enemy wants to be. The enemy wants to think he's big and bad. But, but the, the Lord says, I have given you the keys, my son. I have given you the keys, my daughter. Young person, he has given you the keys to bind those thoughts in your mind. As I end tonight, I just want to let you know that we have full reign. Even though we're earthly beings, we are 
citizens of heaven. It is time, it is time to be loosed from generational curses. Come on, somebody. It's time to be loosed from those generational curses. It's time to be loosed from those things and pray that God he will lose his glory upon our lives. And tonight as we stand up, I, I pray that you, well, the main thing that you get out of, this, out of this message is that maybe there needs to be a deliverance that needs to take place in your life. Maybe there needs to be freedom. You are delivered, but, but, but sometimes there could be things in our, in, in our minds that we're not fighting against. We want people, somebody told me one time, I could pray for you, I could, you know, shando all over, you know, pray over you and everything. But at the end of the day, when you go home, when you close that door, it's just you and God. And sometimes your enemies will come. The enemy, your enemy will come. See, the enemy is at the door standing and he's knocking and he's knocking and he's knocking. Some people have turned and opened it and they went all the way in with him. But there's people today in a church, a remnant, people that are even coming back. I want to tell you something. It's time to bind the strong man. It's time to bind anxiety. It's time to take every thought captive and put it under submission. Tonight, as we just start praying, we're going to just start praying in this building right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Whatever it is, it's in your life. Whatever is stopping you from going all the way in with Jesus, I pray, I bind right now every stronghold. I bind in the name of Jesus. Oh God, I ask you, Father God, that we will be a church that will walk in our authority next year. That will walk in our authority tomorrow. Yes, Jesus. Thank you. Just pray. Just pray, church. Oh, we thank you, Father. Oh, we thank you, Lord. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you for your presence, Father God. Oh, we thank you for your presence. I pray you will break anxiety in the name of Jesus. I pray, God, we bind perversion in the name of Jesus. We bind, oh God, in the name of Jesus. We bind and loose, my God, religion. Let us be loosed from religion. Let us be loosed from the spirit of resistance already. I pray, God, that there will be a people that will go all the way in with you, Father. I ask you, Heavenly Father, that we will walk in our purpose. Yes, Jesus, thank you. Right now, the altars are open. If you feel that you got to just lay out the altar, come and lay out the altar. Ask God that, Lord, I need deliverance in my mindset. I want to be set free. Then tonight, you got to speak. You got to use the authority that you have. Thank you.